Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Joe's Marketing, and today we are going to be diving right on in to some mechanism, right? Mechanism? And also a little bit of actual additions. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, there's a project I want to work on today, and to do that, I am going to definitely need a little bit of Aridite and Cobalt to do so. Uh, we need to make ourselves an elite crafting table, and this really just relies on that mandolin, which we can only get via Aridite and Cobalt. Um, as you can see, it combines there, and we get that here. And finding Aridite and Cobalt is not the easiest thing to do in the nether. So a good way to, you, uh, to, to find this stuff is to probably use a scanner, actually one of my most favorite OP tools that goes under the radar <laughs> by, like, in, on a lot of packs it's in is this tool right here. I think it was introduced to me like back in like 110 version, like when mods were transferring from from 17 and then we were moving into 110 uh, 2 and then we moved into 112 and of course now we're moving further ahead. Um, but this mod I, I come into I think in a um I, I hate to say the name of the pack because for some reason ads it was it was called uh, Radon, I do believe. Um, but we can make the scanner. Let it of course it's going to instantly charge because we have that wireless power here. Uh, but what we need to make is a blank scanner module, and I'm gonna explain this here in a minute, and then we're gonna need to, to apply uh, a material to it. Now, I'm actually gonna make two of these because I want to be able to swap between two different types of materials, and this is just a stone that's going next to it. And the good thing is, is this actually has a storage for inactive parts, uh, but we can also store multiple parts, and you can see it has an energy cost, and we have a energy of 5,000. So each time we use this, if I have two of these modules in here, then that's gonna be 200 power it's going to use each time we utilize this thing. So let's talk about what this thing can do, because it's pretty cool. It's gonna allow us to be able to sniff out blocks, basically. Um, we can set this to any block, um, and to do that, we can basically, let's say, for example, um, I want to highlight uh, this wood here. So I just clicked on the wood, and you can see it configured to oak wood. Now if I throw this inside the scanner, and I use it, you can see it's now gonna highlight everywhere that oak wood exists. I know, it's that's pretty sick, right? Um, and it's gonna stay highlighted for a little while, um, and then fade away. So this is gonna allow us to find ore. So so long as we find our first bits of ore, we can find aridite and cobalt. Um, we can put them on this module, then we should be good. So I'll go ahead and select that, and then we'll go ahead and throw that in there. And same goes for this. I'll just leave it in my inventory because this is the one we're going to scan uh, cobalt with. So let's get to ore hunting because that's what I got to do because I got to get quite a bit of it because we're going to need several, I believe. Like we need two blocks of it. That's 18. And then there are eight of these elite components that we need in each require two. So 16 on top of that. Yeah. So 32 is, uh, is what we're going to need. So or yeah, a little more than 32. Um, so we should be able to get this done. So let's head out and uh, grab some of those ores. So here we go. Here is some cobalt and what I should be able to do is of course throw this in here as well. So we have cobalt and ardite scan and hopefully find a bit of it. Wow. We got a whole block of it here and a whole block of it here. Yeah, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of cobalt here. That's a large quantity. I've not find that I've not found that in ardite though. Um, I guess it's only on like specific islands because like there's a whole other chunk here Nice, so as far as cobalt goes we definitely got that. Oh, we got another one of those little little mites there um, So I'm gonna keep running through each of these islands. We should be able to like come up on these islands and just scan them and Like right there is a little chunk of aridite and same goes for that side. There's a little chunk of aridite hidden in there as well. So we're just about to craft this. All we gotta do is get our advanced crafting table here and we're about ready to go. Oh boy. There we go, elite crafting table. Okay, so now that we have our elite crafting table, what I need to do is make myself an atomic reconstructor. Yes, I know, that's jumping really quick, but I've actually, over time, I have started to prep these items up and they did take a quite a lot of time. So, uh, or I should say they didn't really take all that much time, to be honest. Um, a lot of the stuff we've already had, so really, we were just sort of waiting. All right, so let's take a look here. I think I have just about everything. You can see here are the couple of items that we need. A little bit of lapis. Let's grab that, man. That cat is getting really annoying. 
All right, so Lapis, we just needed a couple bit of, uh, bits of those. And then we need this Pure Certus. Now over here, I did make a new card. That is the Calculation Press. Or I did make a new press, the uh, Calculation Press. Now, the, to make the Calculation Press, we actually needed the Moon's Dungeon Brick. So I'm glad I grabbed some of that because that's something that's actually required. Oh, there's that pesky cat. It's not a friendly cat, so don't think these cats are your friends. They are bad. You accidentally punch them, you're you're asking for it. Okay, so with that, let's go over here, and we're gonna toss one of these in here, and then get our calculation press going. And what this is gonna do is gonna create a calculation press out of the pure Sirtis Quartz Crystal, and really, that's all we need. All three of those. So when I say I've been prepping, I have. I don't want to do a, a whole lot of uh, crafting on camera. And here we go. Oh, an atomic reconstructor. Now, why am I so happy about uh, about this atomic reconstructor? Well, well, you might ask. Um, I kind of want to get this powered. Um, we need to run this power into here and get this hooked up um, and get some wires running. I think we can we can lower this power down. So let's let's get these stuff ready to go, uh, so that way we can lower the power down. Um, from high voltage to low or to medium voltage, right? We should be able to do that. So I want to transfer the power from this HV here into a lower power going down back to our uh, or taking from our high voltage going down to our medium voltage. To do that, we can use ourselves a transformer. And that's actually how it works at your house. You know, that's how power kind of works. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself another one of these. We're going to kind of place them on the wall here. I know, very, very fancy. Uh, grab some high voltage cabling, get that running over to here. And then what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna run this actually just down to the ground, I think. I don't even know if we're gonna need these wall mounts. This back area, we don't need to be back here anyways. I think we can access the slag elsewhere and I might actually create another chest to put the slag back up in this, this first chest. Um, but what we can do is place it on the ground. Um, we might need to move this though because it does seem like it is facing the wrong direction. Actually, we can probably just place it here. Just like so. Yeah, that should work. Um, so with it with it here, um, we have the high voltage connector here and then our HV connector. So what we should be able to do is have two different connectors going to it. So let's hook up our HV. So this is going to connect our HV cable. And then with this transformer, we should be able to now get our high voltage out of it and just go ahead and run our, uh, or not high voltage, or medium voltage. Wow, I'm getting all confused here, but um, I kind of know what I'm doing. I kind of, it's kind of, all right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and run this right here. And we're gonna place a medium voltage relay and then just connect our medium voltage insulated cable. Since this is actually insulated, we won't die. We'll connect that there to there. So now we should be able to carry that signal by just bringing this medium voltage cable with us and bring it somewhere where we can actually use it, right? So for example, right here, we'll place that and continue moving our insulated MV cable back and forth. Oh, perfect. So now we should have some power. So let's get this quickly set up. I'm just gonna place it right here for now. So we have it here. On top of this, I'm gonna go ahead and place our connector to get it hooked up to power. And then we're gonna run, I don't think the sign is in the way. So we'll place this here and here, and then we should be getting power. You can see it's going up and a laser just shot, right? Well, we need to stop this laser. So to do that, we need a redstone torch. And then we're also gonna need a pressure plate because I kind of like to use a pressure plate for this. Um, let's grab, yeah pressure plate and we'll just use a regular wooden pressure plate that should be that should do the trick uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this once to stop the pulse and set it to redstone only mode so now when it receives a redstone pulse via this then it will pulse right so this thing is gonna build up power and what I, <laughs> what do I want to use this for why do I even want this thing well if you've noticed um, we're we're lacking on prismarine right because well, have you seen any uh, ocean monuments? Because I certainly haven't. So Prismarine is kind of what we need. And the reason I want Prismarine is so we can get wireless power 
through RF tools. This right here will get us started with wireless power and all we need to get started with it is just prismarine shards. All right, let's grab some nether quartz and turn this into prismarine. All we gotta do is just throw it on the pressure plate and look at that. Now, you notice we only got 24. Why didn't it do the whole stack? Well, it doesn't have enough power stored up in it. Um, so I bet if we did hook this directly to HV, it would be a bit faster, but it's not that big of a deal. And by the way, all of this has become self-sufficient from what I've seen. Um, this is completely full. I've noticed, and that's what the di that's where the diesel is coming from, going into this diesel generator. But I'm noticing that the oil is not building up, and it could be because this is on. So if I turn that off, I want to make sure that we aren't out of oil, which I don't think we are. Um, and I want to see this start to build back up, or at least oil start to build back up in here like that. Perfect. So that means that oil's in there, and you can see this is already starting to drain. So really, this is providing enough, and it's actually providing more than enough, because that right there has been going up. So overall, this uh, little setup with the diesel generator should be working so long as we continue to have enough oil. And there we go, we can toss some more of this on here. So at the moment, I am building in an area to get mechanisms started. That is what I want to work on. So I'm gonna have, this is actually gonna be the floor level right here, and then these walls are gonna be filled in. We're gonna make it look really nice, and then up here you can see I have the hole, um, and we're gonna put an elevator here, just a, a regular elevator. I would go with like, we might later on end up maybe trying out some some elevator stuff from like RF tools, but I think it's just a standard, you know, whoosh elevator should get the job done. And I think this is gonna be really cool looking. It's almost gonna be like space crafty looking uh, how we're gonna, we're gonna put some glass and stuff in here to sort of make this stand out. And then I'm gonna extend this so it's a bigger platform. And this is, yeah, where mechanism's gonna go. We might even have applied energistics. It's a nice large space for automation and stuff like that. This is gonna be uh, pretty neat. And it's, you know, I'm trying to keep everything into this island. I still haven't got the, uh, you know, the, the big balloon set up, but I do have a large quantity of wool at the moment to be able to do this. This is still running, like, and I'm getting so much wool. So this is great because I do want to use this for balloons. And uh, the balloons are actually going to go on this side. There's going to be a balloon that's up here. There's going to be a balloon on the other side. Because this over here sort of looks like a fan. Like uh, this would be like pushing it forward. Some kind of very steampunk style fan. And then eventually we'll end up moving this windmill. Because this will be hooked up to wireless power anyways. Um, it might get moved, you know, because right now it's just kind of sticking out like a sore thumb. Uh, and I want to kind of smooth out the this whole segment over here and, you know, make things look a little bit better. That's the ultimate goal, so that way I can share this world with you guys. And, of course, you guys have it. And, and I, I usually do log and keep my worlds, you know, forever. So uh, that's the ultimate goal for me. So I can eventually, you know, maybe go back and look at all this work that I put a lot of time into. Because I really do put a lot of time into these videos. And uh, I really do appreciate you guys all for watching them. So I've got the build done. All we need now is an elevator or two elevators actually. So let's hop down here and see what we've done. Look at this. I know it's not, it's not like perfect. It's not like blow your mind like cool, but it gets the job done. And I really like how open it is here. Um, so what this allow me to do is I want to put the, a lot of the machines in these walls here. And that's just kind of how it's gonna it's gonna roll, right? So all I gotta do is uh, block that hole up. We can grab some cobble. With that, we should be able to go whoosh. There we go. Remember the whoosh sound? I was like, hey, there we go, perfect. So now we, we're getting a little bit further into some technology. Actually, what I wanna do here is I wanna utilize these power cells, right? So to do that, let's dive into some mechanism, right? The mechanism actually is pretty much like open to us. Like for the most part, uh, like recipes are not too bad. Like getting some of these things, like all the basic materials, that's redstone, osmium, gonna get us our basic control circuits. And then these control circuits are then gonna be used for all of the, the stuff. It's, it's pretty much just like, you know, raw, unchanged um, mechanism. Like even this recipe here, like this is like standard recipe. Ooh, I need more glass. That reminds me. Glass is now a lot easier to make. I did I actually I could probably just unchisel some of this glass that I've made. Um and then we could 
use that. <laughs> but still, I, I need more glass. Um, and glass can be made a lot easier now that we have an arc furnace. Because we can just throw the sand directly in there, and bam, sand, which I did grab a bit more. As you can see, there's a whole bunch more sand. Um, all I gotta do is just toss it in this chest. This is going to automatically pump that over into here, and that's gonna go. As you can see, we're getting pretty low on the durability on these, right? Right. You would think we'd have to remake them, right? Right. Wrong. We don't have to, because we should be able to throw them in here. <gasps> no! I was hoping we'd be able to bring the durability back up. No, it doesn't work. So it looks like we are going to have to actually remake these, which is, it's not bad actually to, to do. So, I mean, if we do run out of our electrodes, oh well, you know, we can of course always go back and, uh, and remake them, they're, they're not that bad. So now that we can make this metallurgic infuser, we need a way of getting power moved around. Um, so we can go ahead and, and use an MV, but I actually want to make sure we can get max power in here. So I'm gonna use an HV connector, um, and we're gonna just source our power from the HV. This can handle it, but it's limited in its power transfer as this is a basic power cell. Uh, there is another step up we can go, but um, I don't wanna make all the resources just yet, but we can always upgrade as this becomes a multi-network, right? So the more power cells we have, the more storage overall we're gonna have. And as they're placed in the world, things can be changed. So you can see I have these placed in the world. We have this power cell and this one. These two technically right now, they're not linked. So we need to do that. So to link, you can see right here, all you gotta do is click that on there. The module's installed and you can see it's linked to ID one. What I can do is I can link this card now by putting it in the link slot. And now, if I put this in here, it's actually linked to this one. So now these two are connected together. And all we gotta do is break them and just place them in the world somewhere, right? They both have the ID cards in them. When we replace them down, you can see they both have the ID in them. Um, so these are ready to go. All we gotta do is get some power in them. And like I said, I wanted to just hook this up. Oh not getting myself killed, that would be a, a good thing to, to do. Uh, so where do I wanna plug this in? Hmm, that is a thing. I mean, I guess I can just plug it in right over here. Ooh, I almost touched that that line. Wow, I need to watch out. Ooh, right here actually would be a decent spot, wouldn't it? We can place that right here. And then all I gotta do is uh, hook a connector onto it, like that. And then I'll just stretch this wire over to the top just like so, and you can see it's not getting power. Well, I need to set this to um, set all sides to send energy or input energy, and I should be able to set this side to insert energy, and now you can see energy is starting to build up. So we are getting power. Of course, it's gonna be limited right now, and as you can see, we are limited to 5,000 RF per tick. These can only output that as these are the lower end version. All right, so. <laughs> Let's go ahead and place this one, right? Because you would think, like, the, these should be linked, right? Yep, they are. As you can see, we now have power here, and we can set this to out, and what that'll do is that's gonna output power to anything that we connect to it. Um, and to do this, we have our metallurgic infuser, and for example, if I place this metallurgic infuser right here, if I place this in the wall, and I make sure it's set to output, and we place this down, this should now have power, just like you see. And uh, so we can actually get started with our metallurgic infuser and get some things going. Like, let's grab some redstone and some iron, and all we gotta do is put the redstone in here. It's gonna build up its redstone, and we'll go ahead and throw some iron in here, and bam, we're getting into mechanism. As far as power movement goes, to transfer power from machine to machine, I think going with just basic, the universal cable for right now for mechanism is gonna be great. Um, this is how we're going to transfer energy, and if you ever played with Mechanism before, you understand. Mechanism definitely has a learning curve, and, you know, once you get past that learning curve, you should be pretty good. Like, this mod is not too difficult to understand. Um, so one thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the power from here, and we're going to route the power to the middle, so I can see my power core right here. That's kind of, I want this to be visible. But what I can do is I can just go ahead and let's just say we want to connect to this wall here. 
Well, we can just set this up so that way we can get the power back behind this wall. Um, all we got to do is route the cables underground. And if we technically wanted to see the cables, we could use, um, I, you could use glass or whatever you want underneath here. I'm pretty sure this particular machine can connect power to any side. I think the, the back isn't the only spot, is it? No, I think it, connect to, it can connect to the bottom. So we can actually hide this pretty well. Uh, not all mechanism machines, though, allow you to, to, you know, pick and choose where you want your power to go. That is uh, kind of a luxury with mechanism, is getting to choose that, because uh, not all machines support that, un unfortunately. That's the only downside, I think, to mechanism. I really wish the sides were a lot more customizable. I know that some are definitely customizable, but not all the time. Um, does this become like, I don't know, a thing. Uh, there is a wrench though that we can get in mechanism. It's actually called a configurator. I guess that's uh, the better term for it. So this configurator we will be able to get so long as we have um, this, which is the enriched alloy. So this will probably be one of the first things you wanna make. Um, this tablet does not have to have power in it in order to make the craft. But of course it will start to charge up because we do have that wireless charging that's going on. And of course that wireless charging is basically free power. We're not really doing it. I mean, all of our power basically at the moment is free other than our diesel generator, which technically is using a, a fossil fuel resource that eventually will disappear from where it's currently located. But all we'd have to do is relocate, right? Dude, you are back again. I, I don't know what is reincarnating you, but man, he keeps coming back. So at the moment, our last bit of iron and redstone have been used up. So it does use, um, for each one of these um, enriched alloys, it's gonna use one iron, one redstone. Same thing goes for osmium. So we need to get two of these things done in here. Uh, to be able to make any of the other machines that you see here that I have listed, these are honestly the, the most important as of right now for me, um, is getting the enrichment chamber, also getting a crusher. Um, the enrichment chamber can do a lot of different things. As you can see, it can actually take on crushed uh, tin dust and stuff like that, and it can convert it, but it can also do things like progress us further in mechanism. And that's kind of what I'm looking at doing. The crusher also has its purposes. It can do things like break down ore into their dust parts, right? So for example, we can take uh, this, and I believe it works for like all of the other uh, different ore clusters that we are using in this pack. Um, yeah, here's the ore cluster. So it's going to give us like, so for example, silver grit, we can take that silver grit and throw that into the energized smelter, not the enrichment, but the energized smelter and thus skipping the whole arc furnace process. So we don't have to use the arc furnace. And this is probably going to be more energy efficient than the arc furnace. Anyways, the arc furnace though has the potential to be way faster just because it can process so many items at once, so long as it's getting enough power, but that's another problem. Power. Also, we have to worry about our uh, electrodes as well. That's uh, that's another part of this whole thing. Um, so getting into mechanism is just making it easier for us, right? Getting our processing and stuff uh, set up and automated a lot easier. So we're gonna these basic processors, how we're gonna make this. Also, these basic processors and the enrichment alloy is how we're gonna make upgrades. There's so many different things that we can do, but these upgrades are really what make these machines shine and make them go incredibly fast, but also use a lot of power. So we're gonna need ones that increase the uh, speed of the machine, but also increase the efficiency of the machine. Because if you do one over the other, believe me, the power consumption gets in insane. Uh, yeah, it can get quite crazy. And you can see the power usage stuff over here on the bottom left, if mechanism is kind of new to you. Now, don't get me wrong. I know a lot of you guys are probably like OG modded Minecraft players, right? And I'm not talking down to you. I had some people in the comments think that I was kind of talking down to them. I don't know how they got that feeling, but um, I try to cover a broad audience, right? Not specifically pertaining to the advanced individual, even though I would consider myself quite advanced when it comes to a lot of different things in modern Minecraft. Not always do I get to, to use them or, or show them off um, in a video. In this particular pack, I should be able to, because I absolutely love uh, diving into new stuff. 
Um, but yeah, don't don't feel like I'm talking down to you because I, I completely understand like if mechanism if you understand how to do it, right? I just don't want to skip over something because honestly, for the longest time, I didn't even know how to use mechanism. Um, I just never took the time to dive into it or even learn the basics of it. And understanding how to utilize these menus is probably the first step in understanding mechanism. And uh, I'm sure all of you guys have been there, even those who are super advanced and have been playing modern Minecraft for many years, much like I have. So as always, I want to give a huge shout out to one of my patrons. And of course, today, that is going to go to Lars. Thank you so much, Lars, for becoming a Patreon. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon yourself and maybe getting your own custom sign on the wall or whatever that may be, like access maybe to our Discord, which, uh, I mean, anybody can join, but you also get custom perks over there. Not only that, you also get access to our sub servers. So we have an awesome community of people over there. And uh, if you're looking for a great server to join, then check out the Patreon. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, if you did, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and also click that subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, of course, thanks for watching.